Hey guys, I hope week two of distance learning has been going better for everyone. I'm still having a bit of a hard time finding a work, school, and home life balance, but it has definitely been better this week than last week. What I did was create a spreadsheet so I can write down the things I need to do for different aspects of my life, which was actually helped a lot. So with that, and by having more consistency and routine, I know that it will get a lot easier, and I'm hoping the same goes for you. Today in this mini lesson, I'm going to review the prompt with you and quickly model how I would complete this assignment. So this assignment, as you can see, is the Mead breakdown assignment. While some of us seem to have understood the text, it seems that others had a harder time and that's totally okay. This is a very difficult text, but it is certainly manageable. Two strategies that can help make it more manageable and that can be helpful when reading difficult text are summarizing and paraphrasing. Summarizing, I am sure many of you are familiar with because you have written them before and also because it's part of PQCSV, which stands for predicting, questioning, clarifying, summarizing, and visualizing. Paraphrasing, you may not be as familiar with, but you have heard of before because we discussed these two at the beginning of this year. Um, so we're going to very quickly review paraphrasing and summarizing um, for those of you guys who don't remember or for those of you guys who weren't here at the beginning of the school year. So we'll start off with a paraphrase. And according to dictionary.com, a paraphrase is a restatement of a text or passage giving the meaning in another form as for clearness. So the way that I think of a paraphrase is taking a sentence or a paragraph and rewriting it in my own words so that it makes perfect sense to me. Now, if you're wondering how do I write a paragraph or what can I do to write one, um, it's as simple as just rewriting the text so that, again, it makes perfect sense to you or it makes perfect sense to your peers, right? Because oftentimes we can read many texts and they'll make sense regardless of how difficult or how easy it is. But if you're able to put it in your own words, you can always guarantee that you will go back to it and it will make perfect sense to you. And you can even always have it next to the original um, sentence or paragraph so that way you can make sure that both of them are reading the same and you have an understanding and idea of where this paraphrase came from. <clears throat> According to dictionary.com, a summary is a brief statement or account of the main points of something. Again, summary I know that you guys are very familiar with and when I think of a summary, I think of the main idea or the main point as is mentioned on this PowerPoint of what the story or the text is about. Um, and one way that we can, um, one thing that we could do actually to help us write a summary is to think of and use the five W's and the H, which stands for who, what, when, where, why, and how. Another thing that I tend to do that um, I actually forgot to include on the slide was to, um, after you finish reading the text, um, put it away or turn it around so that you can't immediately access it, and then just write down everything that you remember from what you read. And typically the things that you remember are the main points of what it is, so that could be helpful too. If you guys want to see more of a visual representation of the difference between paraphrasing and summarizing, paraphrasing and summarizing, um, you can pause the video here to take a look at this chart. Um, again, this may be familiar to you guys because we did go over it um, at the beginning of the school year. And if you would like to watch this two minute video that gives you more information about summarizing and paraphrasing, you can watch um, the video by clicking this optional link here. Um, this video, again, is only two minutes. I think that it's very helpful and very clear. And also, as a hint, it might be very useful when you're answering your exit slip. Okay. So going back to the assignment, I'm going to start off by reading the directions. <clears throat> and the directions say, reread paragraph two, in the Pink Box Below, From Sex and Temperament in Three Primitive Societies by Margaret Mead. 
Now the paragraph number on your assignment is going to be different um, from this one and some of your classmates. None of you guys are going to have number two because I'm only using it to show you guys how um, I would approach this assignment. So again, um, not everybody in the class is going to have the same paragraph. Some of you guys will, but nobody is going to have paragraph number two. Okay. So the first thing I need to do is reread this paragraph, right? So it says it right here. Cool. That sounds very easy. So now um, let's continue reading. In the blue box below, include the following. Paraphrase paragraph two. Write down the steps you took to understand and paraphrase paragraph two. Write a summary for paragraph two. Write down the steps you took to understand and summarize paragraph two. And then go back to paragraph two in the pink box and highlight the thesis statement or the argument or the claim or the central idea of the paragraph, whichever one of those four that I've identified. Okay. So the way I would approach this is, um, even though I'm an English teacher, um, many of you guys already know this, my first love has always been math. Um, when I was in high school, I was the biggest STEM geek. Um, so because of that, I automatically think chronologically, I think in steps and, and um, doing things in order. So I would start with number one and then move on to number two and then three, four, five. Um, and the reason I would do this is because when reading, um, you would write a paraphrase for sentences and um, phrases that you need to clarify or sentences that maybe you don't understand immediately what the text is saying. Um, or maybe you do know what they're saying, but you don't like the way that it's written. So if you paraphrase it, you can break down the sentence and put it in your own words so that it makes more sense to you. Or with the other example, um, you could rewrite it so that it looks better to you or so that it's written in um, the format that you typically speak or that you typically write. Um, another thing that I might also consider doing is doing one and two together and then three and four together. Um, because again, I think chronologically, so it would be easier for me. 